to a lot of us is really quite an achievement to be thought of as a real Celtic. What it means to be a Boston Celtic is there's a lot of tradition, there's a championship winning drive that we had. It means teamwork, it means pride, but most of all I think it means leadership. The outside now to Sam Johnson is good! These are the things that create the Celtic mystique that, that everybody talks about. What capped it for the Celtics is 11 championships in 13 years. It's all over. The Boston Celtics are once again the world champions. Look up and see all of those banners that are hanging up in the rafters. That they would also like to include their name, but they know what they must go through to be a part of that honor. You have to be on a team that plays together. You have to have what they call Celtic pride, which is something that Russell and Havlicek and Kuzi and Casey Jones brought to Boston, and you have to win a championship. Celtic green is the unique green. It's a long history, a tradition of excellence, of great players. It means so much, and I think everybody knows the tradition of the Boston Celtics. Because when you hear Celtic pride, you know, it's for the sacrifice of everybody that you give yourself up. One man can be all he can be to the next man's all he can be. I've embraced the history and the culture and what it is to be a Celtic. The sacrifice, the hustle, the teamwork, the heart, the soul, determination. That's what Celtic pride is. As the NBA's most storied franchise, the Boston Celtics have set the standard for basketball excellence. Their championship banners are testament to a dynasty that spanned four different decades, and their tradition of Celtic pride was passed from one group of legends to the next. But after winning their 16th NBA crown in 1986, Boston's run of glory drew to a close. The stars known as the Big Three would retire and the Celtics who followed them hailed in comparison to their legendary predecessors. Larry Bird's not walking through that door, fans. Kevin McHale's not walking through that door, and Robert Parrish is not walking through that door. After two decades without a title, the Celtics would endure their most painful loss just days before the 2007 season. The giant in the world of sports has died. Celtics legend Red Arback died Saturday at 89. Quite simply, Red Auerbach was the Boston Celtics, their unquestioned leader when they were among the most successful franchises in all of sports. The patriarch of the Celtics since 1950, Red had a hand in all 16 championships. I think it was difficult on the city of Boston and all the people that you know had grown in, uh, to love Red. And Red was kind of a figurehead um, in Celtic tradition and Celtic lore. And, uh, I was a player that was drafted by Red and Red had a, a great deal of influence on me coming back to the Celtics. And he was so important to our fans and to the tradition of the Celtics. And so that was a, that was a big blow to lose Red. And his death seemed to cast a cloud over their season as Boston stumbled to one of their worst records ever. And the Celtic losing streak continues. Everything that could have gone wrong in 06, 07 certainly went wrong. They were coming off a 24 and 58 season highlighted by an 18 game losing streak. There was a negativity totally surrounding the entire franchise. Things were as low as they'd ever been. But that low point would also become a turning point as GM Danny Ainge turned frustration to hope. Yeah, this proposed trade has been agreed to and will occur. Seattle will send Ray Allen to Boston for the number five pick. This is a blockbuster trade. It's been talked about for years. KG no longer a wolf. He's going to the Boston Celtics. 
two trades brought a perennial all-star in Ray Allen and a former league MVP in Kevin Garnett. They would join together with the cornerstone of the franchise, Paul Pierce, to give the Celtics a new version of the Big Three. On this trade, I love it. I, I, I just think it gives us a chance, it gives us hope. That's what we want. Um, you know, from low expectations to high expectations, that's what we want. That's exactly what we want. Finally, you can start to see a buzz, a little bit of a spirit. Instead of hoping for something, now you got something. Now you got something right there. This, this city just got uplifted. It's like a new breath. Yeah. yeah. It's just fantastic. Why? Why? They're awesome. KG, yeah. Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, that's all you need. Championship yeah. is coming. The expectations once those two guys came in were, were enormous, and uh, we've all of a sudden become a, a team to beat in the East. I think they were excited about that. I mean, the enthusiasm that those guys had coming together, and Doc got them together too, and Doc you know, shared the same things, and Doc said, okay, if we win, that's great, but if we don't win, we have no excuses. It's on the head coach and the three-star players to find a way to, to be successful. These stars had aligned at just the right time. The Celtics were holding training camp in Italy, where the team would have a chance to gel. Right now, we just landed in Rome, getting ready to start off training camp. Long road for this journey we're about to begin right here in Rome, baby. It was perfect. It couldn't have happened uh, at a better time for us to go over to Europe because that's a time to bond. When you travel abroad, you're in a foreign country, you're with your team, and at the same time, you're eating, sleeping, you know, talking basketball, hanging out, relaxing. It's only right that we go to the Coliseum with Gladiator. It's only right. It's a nice. I like. I like. I like. This is what we're playing for. We're doing best out of five. First team to 20 wins, okay? The winner, dinner's on me. Go! Nice, nice. Good action, good action. Come on, Wayne! Now you had practice in two days and uh, the grind was coming in, but at the same time, we had a new team. And you could see the bonding, and you could see almost of a, all of us coming together. Nice gym. This one, I like this one. It feels like you got a little mouse on you. To get Kevin and Ray and Pose and Eddie and these new guys, it was like a breath of fresh air. And I think a lot of the guys are anxious to get started. It's a lot of fun. You one of the best shooters in the world. You don't need no adjustments. You're right about that. Uh, you ain't gonna argue with me on that one. Trying to blend his new ingredients into a unified team head coach Doc Rivers would find their word to live by. Once we got the big three, I was in search of something that I thought could bond us as a group. And we brought in a, a guy named Keita uh, from South Africa. And the first thing he said is, guys, right now everything is great for your basketball team. But there's going to come a moment where you're going to face unreal adversity. And that's when the word Mbutu and playing together will come through for you. And this word captured me right away. You know, a person is a person through other people. I can't be all I can be unless you are all you can be. It's a way of life. It's not just a word. You, you live in Butu. Hey, let me get on your back. Hey, I'm going to get on your back many nights this year. Many nights. <laughs> and ditto. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of times when you hear uh, Celtic pride, um, it's very similar to Mbutu. You know, it's for the sacrifice of everybody, and uh, Mbutu is uh, it's the symbol of togetherness. Mbutu, we do everything together. Uh, okay, we all gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. oh, yeah. That's all Mbutu. 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 Y'all go to dinner. I'll pay for all y'all. Yeah. yeah. Hey, this beat starts something real special, man. Look, John. we stay together. Only people who can beat us is ourselves, right here. Right, so right, no matter right. what we go through throughout the game, we stay together, all right? We're all brothers, fellas. Everybody together. It's a journey right no here. No matter what. Man, let's get it done right today, fellas. Let's get it done. No, we know how we do it. Let's go. Let's go. Salta! Hoorah! Salta! Hoorah! Salta! Hoorah! One, two, three! And Let's go.
From the start of the season, it was clear that these Celtics were a true team, and they were instantly transformed into a winning one, thanks to the Big Three. Good pass! Well, that was well done! Taking the league by storm, Boston went undefeated through its first eight games. Oh, what a play! Big-time basketball! This is a team that is playing unselfish basketball. At the end of the first overtime, tied at 95. Pierce, looking, looking, gets it in. Ray Allen for the game, knocks it down! It was crazy because, you know, we came out, you know, people was talking like, they don't know how we're going to jail together, they don't know our chemistry, but we came out and we played the game like we've been playing with each other for a long time. Garnett, how about that? That's what we wanted! What a great play! We were rolling. Uh, we came out, it looked like we were going to go undefeated in November. But we were playing real good basketball. Ray Allen, one of the great shooters in the NBA. Allen for three. Two for three. Oh! <laughs> basketball is back in Boston, wouldn't you say? The record, the talent, the atmosphere. The Celtics have the best record in the NBA at 20-2. and two. Tied for the best start in franchise history. We were able to come out of the gate the way we did because of how hungry we were and excited to be together. Uh, it was like new energy. Pass deflected by Eddie House, picked off by Pierce. Ray Allen for the game. Got it! And the buzzer! <laughs> but the strength of the team went beyond its three stars. In just his second season, Rajan Rondo took his role as starting point guard and ran with it. Sensational. Young Kendrick Perkins had established himself as the starting center, giving Boston its anchor in the paint. Garnett swing it over to Pierce. Underneath extra pass, Perkins. Wow. Nice play by Perkins. Veteran journeyman Eddie House would find a home in Boston, providing energy and offense off the bench. Kick out. House. Three. Got it. Max, what can't you do? Can't leave the house. The Celtics also added swingman James Posey, who brought championship experience and tenacious defense. Oh, and a creep knock away by Posey. That seals it for the Boston Celtics. And second year forward Leon Poe would burst into a more prominent role. Numbers for Boston. Poe, yes, Leon Poe, and Boston wins it. <laughs> they love Leon. Everybody on this team loves Leon. But Boston's mainstay was still Paul Pierce, who helped carry the Celtics as he always had for the past decade. I had to Pierce, three on three, in the Daddy What a difficult shot! A terrific play by Paul Pierce! Paul's a great player, and uh, not only is he extremely talented and versatile, he loves to play the game. He has totally changed his game, and he has become the ultimate all-around player. Paul Pierce is Mr. Celtic when it comes to consistency and just winning games night in and night out for us, uh, Paul's that guy. But more than anything, Boston's success was built on a foundation of defense, and Defensive Player of the Year Kevin Garnett was the driving force. Kevin has, you know, the holy trinity of defense, which is he has the ability to play defense. 6'11", long, athletic, he has the will and determination, and he also has the intelligence. He plays hard, and he brings 100% focus every day. It starts with KG, because if you're ever at a shoot around or a walkthrough, uh, he does, he's not gonna let anybody wander off or anything. He's like, hey, hey, you're supposed to be over here. You gotta be here. So he's the traffic cop. Defense builds camaraderie, makes teams, I think, feel as one. Throughout the season, Kevin's fierce intensity would never waver. Yes, we knew he had a great reputation. Yes, we knew he was an all-star player. Yes, we knew he was an all-time player. But you do not know everything he brings until you see him on a regular basis. I always said you were my favorite player to watch. 
Yeah. Always, I don't know. You never disappoint. You crack so many jokes, I don't know if that's real or not. No, it's real. I'm joking. Hey, hey, hey. Like, hey. And you never disappointed. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. And you finally got on the right. I finally got on the right by the <laughs> The Celtics arrived at the All-Star break with the league's best record and were well represented in New Orleans. Their three stars all made the Eastern Conference squad, while Rondo was selected as one of the game's top young players. Hey, boy, hey, 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 let me see something now. Yeah. Give, me, give me something now. Give me something now. Have some fun. Meanwhile, Doc Rivers and his staff had the honor of coaching the Eastern Conference. And after achieving all-star status in his playing days, Doc had now come full circle, making his mark as a head coach. The players respect Doc. Doc is a born leader. And I think the players sense that. We got, I don't want to hear it. I am not listening to it. Now, I know. That's fire, man. No, it's a difference. It's a difference. I was composed. No. When he pushed me, I didn't snap back. You got, but you got two fouls. I know I'm going to foul out the game. But, Kevin, think about it. Five-point game. You, you have to sit you. We're going to quarter down 13. Right? I, I know I'm right, but thank you. <laughs> Playing basketball, sometimes it, you get so tensed up, and then you look at Doc, and he smile at you or he'll say something just to relax you a little bit or relax us as a team. I'm thinking about racing the team, Scott, and if I beat anybody, that means y'all got to practice. Wait, 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 go. But even as they dominated the league, the Celtics still felt the need to fine-tune their roster. With an eye toward the playoffs, Danny Ainge signed two battle-tested veterans, Sam Cassell and P.J. Brown, and they paid instant dividends. To Pierce, Pierce driving to the basket, to KG, to Sam's gonna take it. Got it! A three-point field goal for Sam I am! The Celtics come to San Antonio and beat the Spurs. It seemed that everything the Celtics touched had turned to gold. Garnett takes it in high and comes down hard. The big ticket. The Boston Celtics have swept the Texas Triangle. Boston had not only lived up to the hype, they exceeded it. With a league best 66 wins, the biggest single season turnaround in NBA history. Boston would open the playoffs against the eighth-seeded Atlanta Hawks, and after a storybook regular season, their title hopes couldn't have been higher. This is such an extraordinary part of the year. Uh, I think you, this is when you really feel as though the season, season begins. Uh, everybody's on the quest for that championship. I was really concerned going into the playoffs about my team overall and the fact that I didn't think that we had many challenges during the regular season. Uh, had basically a zero turmoil basketball season. We didn't really have any tests. As the series began, it appeared their smooth ride would continue. Rondo isolated against Horford, left side of the floor, drives, draws contact, fall away, it's good anyway, as Rondo crashes to the floor. Oh, that looked like counted in one. Pierce out of the wing, high left hand dribble, zips the entry, Leon Poe catches, wow. flies in, two hand slam, and the foul. The first two games, we was, we was really flowing and, and had the ball movement, the defense was going, and we looked pretty much unstoppable. Rondo across half court, kick out, Posey, three, got it! And uh, the Hawks experiencing major problems dealing with the glare of the playoffs. They look very wide eyed, almost in shock. As expected, Boston cruised to two wins at home, and the rest of the series seemed to be a mere formality. Come in after 2-0, oh gosh, like, yeah, man, you know, we're going you know, to sweep them. The Celtics never could have imagined what was waiting for them in Atlanta, where a fired-up crowd and a young Hawks team were primed for an upset. 
to sell and Garnett, two man gave it a turnover. Three on two. Smith. Atlanta's atmosphere was totally, totally different from what we expected. You know, we knew they'd have a crowd, but we didn't know they was going to have a crowd. To the astonishment of everyone, the Hawks soared back into the series. Everything that we were experiencing was new to us, was new to this team. In a hostile environment, during the playoffs, and so, you know, they knocked us in the mouth twice. Orford. Oh, and he's yapping at Paul Pierce. Al Horford has something to say, and Pierce is looking down there, walking toward Atlanta's bench. Pierce is hot. We thought that we were the Boston Celtics, and that's all we needed to be. Uh, all we needed to do was show up with our green uniforms on, and everything would take care of itself. And, uh, you know, we found out that that's not going to be true. No one could have envisioned the Hawks would make this a three-game series. But they have, and this best of seven is even two games apiece. Back in Boston, the Celtics restored order with a game five blowout. Pierce, high left hand dribble, down to the left side against Josh Smith, spins back into the middle, gets fouled, push wow. shot off the window and in. Next this is the team that won 66 games. But back in Atlanta for game six, they still couldn't shake the upstart Hawks. Two on one, Billy to Smith. And what once appeared unthinkable was now a reality. Rondo for three, short, game's over. And the Atlanta Hawks have found a way to win three games on their home floor. And the series everyone thought would be over in a heartbeat is going the distance. Unbelievable. You would have never believed it. The Celtics hadn't expected to need their home court advantage this soon but they were glad to have it. Game seven, we're at the house. Everybody's gonna be in the building, the fans are gonna be rowdy. We're looking to get this win today. That place, when you step in there, it's electrifying. Um, they ready to go from the start. Them fans, it's, it's unbelievable. Kevin gets into his, you know, routine, you know, all of a sudden it explodes even more. Here's to Garnett. The sellout crowd on its feet. And finally the Hawks came down to earth as the Celtics crushed their upset dreams. Hand to Ray Allen, open three, got it! Point. Finds the trailer Pierce, behind the back to Garnett, scored and the foul. It is beyond anyone's wildest dreams, the degree to which the Celtics are dominating. We knew that we couldn't be beat at home. Uh, that was one thing we knew, just at home was someplace special. A blowout victory in game seven. And the Celtics now move on to face the Cavaliers in round two. If the Celtics had needed a test, it was clear that they had found it and passed it. The Atlanta series, um, I actually thought it was the best thing that could have happened to our basketball team. Well, we learned a lot about ourselves through this, and uh, I don't know what message the league uh, took from this, but um, we've been trying to send uh, messages throughout the year. Uh, when you come here, this is our home court. We're comfortable here, and this is how we play here. Awaiting the Celtics were the defending conference champions, the Cleveland Cavaliers, and their superstar, the incomparable LeBron James. The Cavaliers were a very, very good team. They were battle-tested. They had just come off of their NBA Finals appearance a year ago. And LeBron is just a special talent. He's just hard to stop. One guy can't stop him. So uh, we knew this was, this was going to be one of our toughest tests. The Celtics would tackle that test the same way they had approached every challenge all season not as individuals, but as a team. Together, they would make sure that nothing came easy for the NBA's leading scorer. They are making LeBron James into a jump shooter. They're saying, you're not gonna beat us with your strength. 
LeBron spinning, jumping backwards from the baseline. Very tough shot, no good. Rebound Rondo. He's human. Rondo lead for Pierce, steps around Delonte West. Ooh, he scores off the window and the Celtics have a double digit lead. It's a team defense here. We're not asking for one guy to go out and stop their best player. We're asking for everybody, let's stop their best player. LeBron James in traffic. Oh, great job challenging every shot. Everybody's on the string. Somebody goes to help. Somebody helps him. And then somebody helps the helper. You know, and it just never ends. And that's been a staple of our team. Goes up. Block. It's getting worse for LeBron. It's got to be in his head now. And once we establish our defensive presence, you know, it's very difficult for any guy or any, any team to score on us. Corralling LeBron and clamping down on his teammates, Boston won the first two games at home. Away Garnett diving on the floor, and then a turnover. Here comes Garnett, here comes the roar, and a foul! Impressive win for the Celtics here tonight, once again. The defense on LeBron James, I mean, how shocked are you that he's 8 of 42 in two games? Uh, that's what we try to do. When you look at their team, LeBron is what makes them go. And if we can somehow control him, we control their team. And, you know, with the help of the guys around me, we've been able to do that. As the scene shifted to Cleveland, the Celtics once again enjoyed the comfort zone of a two games to none lead. But just as they had against the Hawks, they would stumble into another bump in the road, allowing the Cavaliers to climb off the ropes and get right back in the series. Driving on West, laid it up, and LeBron blocked the shot. Into the fourth court come the Cavaliers. West, left wing, fires and hits a three ball. And the Cavaliers push further in front. Over to LeBron, down deep to Virgil, muscles it up, ram it in, and foul. This would be their fourth straight road loss. Exactly. All of a sudden now, mentally, they've got to deal with that. It was on their mind because everyone was talking about it uh, every day. Well, you won at home, can you win on the road? The story would be repeated in game four, as inexplicably, the same team that dominated in Boston unraveled in Cleveland, and the Celtics' control of the series had now slipped away as the surging Cavaliers would pull even at two games apiece. A Smith screen, Hoji will defend. Oh! LeBron James with no regard for human life! Cavaliers did what they need to do. Now the pressure is back on the balls from Southern. Any rhyme or reason why you would be able to be so great on the road during the regular season have had these struggles in the postseason so far? There's no excuses for it, but I'm sure if we had that answer, then uh, we wouldn't be probably sitting up here talking about what we're talking about. But we will make adjustments and uh, try to turn this thing around. But for the Celtics, the troubling pattern of playoff inconsistency would only continue. Again, they rose up on their home floor to win the pivotal Game 5. But as if according to script, they would lose their chance to close out the series on the road in Game 6. And now, they were facing another deciding game. Looks of resignation on the faces of the Boston Celtics. They're going back to Boston for Game 7. It's going to be electrifying, definitely in that building. And I make sure my troops are ready um, for this Game 7, and, you know, we can, we can win. We know we can win, so we got to just go out there and do it. The Celtics had the advantage of having Game 7 on their home floor but they also faced the daunting prospect that one of the most feared players in the NBA might just be ready to explode. We knew coming in that LeBron, he hadn't had that really big game yet. I mean, he's had some special moments. He had did some things here and there in the series, but he hadn't had one of those monster LeBron games, and we knew that he was due for one. It's a sudden death game. Whoever wins advances. Whoever loses watch the rest of the playoffs when they live on couch. There was one game I didn't want. It was Game 7 against Cleveland. There's an old saying, you don't want to get to Game 7 when the best player's on the other team. And you don't want to take that chance uh, because he's capable of being great that night. And that was my fear. Get right. right. Get right. Get right. Get right. Before the game, I said, you know, how disappointed would it be for us, you know, to go home this early after all the expectations? Three questions right here. Your why really want it? Do I really want it? And what can I do so we get it? So we get it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Do your part. Let's go, baby. The Cavaliers knew that their superstar could rise to the occasion. The question was, which Celtic would step forward to match him? And the player who accepted the challenge was Paul Pierce. LeBron, strong down the left side, gets Perk up in here, ducks around him, pushes it off the glass and gets the roll. Pierce up fakes the three, steps to 17 feet, jumper switch. You want Paul Pierce to start off right there. Your emotional leader. Now LeBron pulls up for his long two, and it's good. The answer on Paul Pierce. You're going to see a shootout between these two guys. Pierce again splits the trap, drives right down the middle, scoops to the left hand, off the window and in. Pierce is chewing him up here in game seven. We've adopted to this, this team of everyone has to step up. What we do it together, it's not just one guy. But uh, that night, Paul needed to step up for us. Brown and Pierce going at it. They're talking to each other. I love it. This is what it's about. Great move. Flips it with the right hand and gets the roll. He has 20 of their 34 points. Pierce moving to his right. Pull up elbow jumper. Got another one. <laughs> Paul Pierce continuing to throw him down. He's in the zone. He is in a zone. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Paul Pierce, LeBron James. In an epic duel, Pierce would finish with 41 points, while James had 45. But while Paul's heroics kept Boston in the lead for most of the game, LeBron would bring Cleveland back in the final minutes. James with the steal. Here he goes. And James makes it a one-point game. Everything's got to be hard. We got to take care of the ball, all right? Move the ball and run our stuff, all right? That's what we got to do. Pierce had carried the Celtics on his back, but now, in this moment of truth, he returned to their philosophy of sharing the burden and the ball. Pierce down the left side, kicks to the corner. Eddie House, bounce pass. P.J. Brown, he's open. He shoots, and he knocks it down. P.J. Brown, the unlikely hero. And the Celtics go up by three. The outcome was still hanging in the balance, and fittingly, it would fall to Pierce to try and preserve the win. The Celtics' lead is three. Loose on the floor, Pierce grabs it, screams timeout, and he gets it. Paul Pierce making every big play for the Celtics today. And as he stepped to the foul line with a chance to put the game away, it seemed that the fabled Celtic mystique was alive and well. It is very quiet in here as the first free throw bounces off the back rim, pops in the air, and goes right down the middle. Once I shot the free throw, I just I just knew the way it came out of my hand, it was off. Because if you look at my body language, it's, when it goes up and it bounces up, I'm like, oh, it's, it's off. And then it goes in and it's like a smile comes on my face. And that's when I'm like, you know, that had to be somebody watching over me. And I was like, that's red right there. That's him, he's in the building tonight. Seven is history in every way there is. And how about Paul Pierce, magnificent, with 41 points. The longtime Celtic coming through with certainly one of the biggest games of his life. Tonight was basically get the ball to Paul Pierce, get the hell out the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it was. And no need for y'all to ask me no questions. That was the game plan. That's what we did. This man now, all right. This emotional win is good and everything. We enjoy it tonight. On, we still got a lot more business left. Hey, man, hey, hey, listen, just business. What, what Paul just said, and we said it yesterday. On Tuesday, we're exactly where we thought we would be. Game one oh, at home against the champion. For the Celtics, it was on to the Eastern Conference Finals to face the playoff-tested Detroit Pistons, the perennial powers in the East. We knew it was going to be a physical series. And they'd have been to the Eastern Conference Championship five times in a row. Former champions in 2004. Starting lineup been together forever, seems like. I told them they have more experience than us. And, and we're not going to do anything to catch them this year in that experience. So let's just be the best executing basketball team that they've seen in a long time. In game one, the Celtics would execute their plan to perfection, taking control in the second half and pulling away from the Pistons. Rondo, kick out, Pierce on the wing, left hand dribble to the elbow, spins, fades, tough shot, got it, and the Celtics have their largest wow, lead. That was a couple of guys in Paul Pierce's face. 
Jab step with the right foot, puts it to the floor with the right hand, spins, fades, jumps and falling backwards, he nails it! Kevin Garnett, a shimmy shake to the left, to the right! And the Boston Celtics are going to take game one of the Eastern Conference Finals and stay perfect at home in the playoffs now, 9-0 here at the New Garden. I think the choice is the motivation. It being the Conference Finals is the motivation, knowing that this is the task at hand and knowing that if we can get through this, then you know, there's one more step towards the goal. The Celtics went charging into game two looking to hold serve at home just as they had against Atlanta and Cleveland. But instead, they would run right into an ambush at the hands of the Pistons. Rip Hamilton, left-hand dribble drive in the paint. The floater is up and good. Monster shot, Rip Hamilton. Time out. Celtics need to stop. Oh. They hand it off under the basket. The reverse is up and in by Chauncey Billups. But the Pistons hold on, hit some big shots, and win it 103 to 97. So the Celtics finally lose at home. They were 9-0 during the playoffs on their home floor. At some point, we're going to have to win on the road. You know, it's, we've gotten away with it thus far. Uh, that's been taken away. Uh, and if we want what we want, we have to win on the road. When we lost at home, I think a sense of urgency went through us. Like, you know, now it's time to search for something else. We were like, oh my goodness, you know, we haven't been beat at home. We're a place where we thought we were invincible. And going up to that, we hadn't wrote, won a road game either. So this was a hump we were going to have to get over if we were going to get to the championship. As we made that trip to Detroit, you know, the game day, you can feel the determination in guys. I can remember walking in the locker room, you know, you can hear a pin drop. You know, nobody was really talking, you know, everybody was locked in. We in the jungle, ain't nothing else. This is what matters right here. You feel me? Yeah. Nobody else! Oh, Let's get it oh, done, baby! We got what I call that Boston swag now, you know, okay? Okay, so what? Okay, we lost at home. Let's go in on the road. Let's go in on the road. Let's do it. Driven to win game three, Boston came out on the attack and built a huge lead. Allen back to Pierce. Wide open look for three. It's good. To Davis on the right wing on top to Cassell. Cassell guns for three and that is through. Ray, step up. Pick. We're looking for Kevin in the post. And Garnett would help them complete their road to victory. Garnett. Banks it in. And that would probably do it. The Celtics grabbed the home court advantage back. I said, before the game, I told the guys, hey, we, we were doing a regular season. We was the best team in the league on the road. So let's go out here and try to show it, man. Everything that happened before all this is behind us. Uh, it starts right now. But the proud Pistons were far from finished, and they would come storming back to even the series at two games apiece. For left wing, he fires. He filled it up. Antonio McDyke has been the man for the home team. But Boston came home and reclaimed the upper hand. Tonight, Ray Allen steps to his left, quick three, got another one! Back-to-back -back threes for Sugar Ray, and the Celtics are in command of Game 5. Now the series shifted back to Detroit, where the Pistons battled desperately to save their season. And early in the fourth quarter, they held a 10-point lead. We gotta stay solid on defense. Offense, we gotta just stay solid as well. But defense is the key, all right? We were in the huddle during the timeout. I can remember like it was yesterday, and uh, Paul and KG is like, hey, we're not going back home. You know, we didn't want to be in a game seven. We didn't want to put ourselves back in that situation. You know, you know, anything can happen, and they, they let us, they led the charge. And wide left to rip on the floor to the rim. Blocked by Brown to Ray Allen. Allen pushing back to Garnett for the slam. Paul Pierce spins away from Stuckey to the left. Explosion to the goal. Kick back to Garnett. Straight away, top of the circle. Got it. Mental toughness, fellas. Let's go. Mental toughness. It's the Pierce. Left hand dribble away from Rip Hamilton to the free throw line. Spins, hangs in the air. Flip shot. Off the window and in. Score it and the foul. And Paul Pierce can give the Celtics the lead. An 18 to 4 championship caliber run. In that fourth quarter, I just smelt it. I was like, you know, I didn't want this to slip away from us. You know, I wanted to do anything I could offensively, defensively. I thought my teammates really fed off of it. And guys just stepped up to get us over that hump. Closing with the steal, he took it away. They 
Terrence Posey with a huge defensive play. We made plays on both ends, we made shots, we got stops, rebounds, and that's what we needed. Mental toughness and also the physical toughness as well. The Pistons are not going to foul, and the final 10 seconds will tick off the clock. The Celtics survive an opening round crucible. They eliminate King James, and tonight they have taken the torch from the Eastern Conference standard bearers and what one year ago was pure basketball fantasy, an impossible dream, has now come true. So let's go Celtics, beat L.A. and Danny Ainge, thanks for bringing the big three together. Yes! Beat L.A. Beat L.A. Beat L.A. Beat L.A. Domination. That's what you should expect. To the finals. Peace. In the finals, the Celtics would face the Los Angeles Lakers, bringing the NBA's greatest rivalry back to life. They had met for the championship ten times, with Boston winning eight. And their battles were filled with legendary figures and memorable moments dating back to the 60s. It's all over. The Boston Celtics are once again the world champions. In the 1980s, the rivalry was reborn. Here's Magic. Oh, oh, the mark. So here's Larry Bird. Chucking down the court. Larry Bird and Magic Johnson were the leading men in the revival of the Lakers-Celtic drama. He didn't shoot at five seconds left. Magic down the middle, just what I thought. A hook shot at 12. Go! Now the stage belonged to league MVP Kobe Bryant, who had carried the Lakers to the top of the West and then passed the defending champion San Antonio Spurs in the conference finals. And they were favored to beat their old nemesis, the Celtics. This is the NBA's marquee matchup between the two most successful franchises in NBA history. You know, if there's one history you know about, it's definitely the Celtics and the, and the Lakers. This means more than the Red Sox, more than the Patriots. This is everything for me. I want them to win more than anything. You see the Los Angeles Lakers, and I'm, I'm telling you, I had played them back in the day, and one of these guys were in trouble, had been on fire, and I had water. I would have drank the water instead of pouring it on them. It's all about the Lakers and the Celtics. Everybody's excited because finally we've got the Celtics and the Lakers back in the NBA Finals where both teams belong. I couldn't have scripted it any other way. Uh, just to be playing L.A., hometown team, that was everything I could have dreamed of. Tonight, it feels very much like the center of the universe. The 11th time the Boston Celtics and Los Angeles Lakers have met on the game's biggest stage. All week, all I keep hearing is congratulations, congratulations. For what? For what? We're exactly where we thought we would be, but we're not where we want to get to. Here we are. The truth is, we're the better team. Let's go out here and prove it. Yeah, yeah. Let's, oh, let's go! Let's go! Let's go! We do. The time is in! Get No one was picking us, for the most part, to beat the Lakers. And we were looking at each other. Wait a minute, we're the team that won 66 games, and that really angered some of our guys. Hey, We've been the best team all year long. All year long. Let's go out there and show them why. Let's go. Let's go. Showtime! Hoorah! Showtime! Hoorah! Showtime! Hoorah! One, two, three! The blue two. Y'all know what it is. And we are just about set for game one of the 2008 NBA Finals, the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers, and it's 21 years in the making. Here it is again. As the series began, a new generation of stars looked to put their own stamp on the rivalry. Free throw line, comes in, right hand, dunk Garnett! Kevin Garnett has arrived in the NBA Finals. The beat LA chance started about an hour ago. Kobe Bryant fires away. That's good. Kobe Bryant drills it. That's a three. Ray Allen nails one. Then the Celtics go up by a foul. Pretty quick pace to this game. Garnett again. That brings the Boston Bucks to their feet in the garden. We're getting good shots, but we can still make the extra pass, all right? Right now, we're trying to do it so quick. We want to attack them. We can beat them all day, but we got to make the next pass every single time. But Kobe and the Lakers had a plan of their own. Kobe Bryant sometimes makes it look so easy. 
inside Gasol all along, who jams it in. Great pass from Kobe. Back out, Fisher another jumper. Fisher again. With a second quarter surge, the Lakers took a five-point halftime lead, and now the Celtics would have to regroup. We haven't closed either quarter. We had the lead with two minutes left in the first quarter. They closed it out. They closed out the second quarter. Let's close out quarters, and we got to trust. And just as he had all season, Paul Pierce was ready to lead the Boston Charge. Pierce on the right side at the three-point arc. Bounce to Garnett, return to Pierce, fakes the three, gets the bump, shoots the three. Oh, oh. faked it in! Count that three, and a foul! Wow! But with one play, midway through the third quarter, both Pierce and the Celtics appeared to be facing their worst nightmare. Paul Pierce is hanging on to his left knee. Celtic fans holding their breaths here in Boston. He's one of the toughest basketball players I know. And for him to go down like that, from our point of view, we got to the finals and we're like, man, we finally got here and this is what happens. Like, this is unbelievable. You know, no, not right now. You know, not in the biggest moment of my career, right here in the finals. This can't be happening. You have a sense of anxiety in this building yes. because of Paul Pierce going down with the injury. So as Paul Pierce is carried off, now everything is taken on a different field. This is what we're talking about, adversity. You overcome it. We're the better team, we overcome it, all right? Nothing stops us. Right corner, Allen, open three is good. Allen with nine. And Boston ties it at 62. And Paul Pierce has come out of the tunnel. And he wants back in the game right now. I knew if I could put weight on it, that I can, I can jump and I can run, and I'll deal with the pain later, whatever it was. Once I felt that I can do that, I wanted to get back out there. I was like, hey, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. I don't want this to slip away. Many wondered whether Pierce could even play. So what was about to unfold would become the newest addition to the Celtic mystique. Odom didn't want to shoot from the right side, drives in with four on the shot clock, and P.J. Brown met him at the rim with a shot block. Rondo back the other way from Boston. Right side up, Pierce three. He's good. 12 points for Paul Pierce in a quarter that he spent part of in the locker room. Rondo on the run, it's four on three. Rondo pitch, another Pierce three. Good again! Back to back three pointers for Paul Pierce. His dramatic return had inspired the crowd and the Celtics. Now we're playing, guys. Now you're playing. Garnett can't handle it. He jumps across the half court, flips it in the air, and it comes down to P.J. Brown. Cassell, free throw line. Got it. Kevin Garnett saved the possession. That is the kind of play that wins the championships. Then Garnett would add the final exclamation point. Posey, three, no good. Rebound, oh. Garnett, skies over the rim, throws it back down with two hands, and the Lakers are in a world of hurt. They will remember game one for a very, very long time. Paul Pierce coming out of the locker room to score 18 second half points, and game one is history. The final score, Boston 98, LA 88. Hey, great win, guys, but we know we're better than that, correct? We're a better team than that, but we'll take the win. Great win. Let's get in, baby. Good job, Good job, baby. Good job, baby. One, two, three. One, two, three. Well, the big picture here tonight in game two, definitely Paul Pierce's condition. I'm feeling pretty good. I got a new life. How are you feeling, bud? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. When Bob me a new knee today, I'm doing all right. Now, will he be good enough in game two to get the Celtics both games in Boston? Let's do it. This is for all the Marvels. Let's go. Huh? It's a championship series. Let's go. Leave everything on the floor. Let's go. Time is it. Game time. Who? Right when he goes, just go ahead and go down early. Kevin's coming off of you. Yep. You got everything. From the start, all the questions about Paul Pierce's injury were quickly put to rest. Throws out of the wing for Pierce, launches a three, switch. That knee didn't look like it was bothering him too much. 
Rondo for Paul Pierce has a step on the baseline and on Ariza scored off the window and the foul on Ariza. Leon Paul hands to Cassell, cross court waiting, open Pierce, three money. Ooh, boy, you got to love that one. He's been the best player on the floor this first half. Keep it going, guys. Keep it going. going. With Pierce igniting them, the rest of the Celtics kicked into high gear and raced out to a commanding lead. Fishing left wing, straight away Vladi, a three partially blocked by Rondo. Garnett the loose ball, up the floor for Rondo. Touchdown Celtics! Beautiful pass from Garnett. And yeah, this is the largest lead of the first half. In, in transition, tell the guys to look for Leon, he's got Luke Walton guard. Leon Poe's moment had arrived and he was ready to Here's seize it. Leon Poe! Wow! I just stepped out there and I just said I had to make something happen. Stolen by Rondo, sprints near side, three on one, alley -oop for Paul who punches it in. Rondo, ball fake to Poe, again! Leon Poe for the game of his life. Leon driving all the way down the middle, two-hand slam. You know, he had a look on his face that he would not be denied tonight. And now the floodgates have been opened. And now the Celtics just having a party at the Lakers' expense. Leading by 24 in the fourth quarter, the Celtics seemed headed for a laugher, only to find that the last laugh might still belong to the Lakers. Under three minutes now, Kobe, pull up, three over Rondo, switch. It's a nine-point game. This is the closest they've been in the second half. Pierce against Kobe Bryant, backs him down to 12 feet, spins, triple team, trying to throw it out to the wing, knocked away by Fisher, lead pass, Rodmanovic has it, two on one. Vujicic waiting on the wing, open three, got it! This is just incredible. Everybody in the place thought this was over. Pierce is a target guy. Watch his stack hold. Pressure the ball. Five on the shot clock. Deflected by Rodmanovic and stolen. Here comes Rodmanovic in for the dunk. And a four-point game. This crowd is stunned right now. Hey, don't get us in any hope. You gotta send the message. There is no hope for them, all right? Come on now. And LA's final hope would be extinguished, as the man who had started it all for Boston added the finishing touch. Straight away against Rondo. Rodmanovic, shovel pass. Bujicic, left side three, blocked in the air. It's foul. A huge block from Paul Pierce. And the Celtics will survive. We're going out here to get some straight up wins. All right? Y'all hear what I'm saying? We're out here to find our trophy. That's it. Back home. We know what we're going to LA for. Keep that in mind now. Straight up. Uh, uh, two more, uh, 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 uh. How's it feel, man? Feel good, man. But gotta win two more games, and I feel even better. All right, back at the house, baby, LA. You know we gotta get this win. Let's do it. I'm bringing it back, baby. I get to go home and play the place where it all started for me. You gotta ask me what a season. If you guys go to finals, who do you want to be against? What to say, to LA Lakers? Now a Celtic, Pierce didn't exactly receive a friendly homecoming. Go Lakers, baby, number one. Everybody yeah. pick up their energy for tonight. We gonna beat Boston tonight. The season has come down really to this for the Lakers. No team in the history of the league has come back from down 3-0 in any playoff series. They're going to throw a punch at us. We just got to make sure that we duck, stick and move, stick and move, and then throw our punch right back. Entering the game with an 8-0 playoff record at home, L.A. did land the first punch, and it was thrown by the league MVP. Kobe Bryant off to a tremendous start. The Lakers is so sharp early. And the problems that plagued Boston late in Game 2 followed them to Los Angeles as they struggled to recapture their rhythm. KG jump pass is too high. Something's looking a little antsy out there. Rondo moves to his right. Kobe reaches in, knocks it away. Derek Fisher has his team. There's another turnover. Already four for the Celtics. Run the play. You're looking, you're trying to determine what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. When you come off an elbow, read the play. But the Celtics were still within range, and now they would ride the hot hand of Ray Allen into the lead. Right wing Allen, wide open three, it's good. The crowd a little nervous right now at the Staples Center. Fueled by Allen, the Celtics were 12 minutes away from putting a stranglehold on the series. Ariza 
Allen trying to fight. Allen the three. Knocks it down. His fourth three-pointer of the game. A 15 to three run. Joey, I want a timeout. Hey guys, if you want the game, it's there. If you want it, it's there. But after being contained in Boston, Kobe Bryant would not be held down any longer. And with 36 points, he kept the game from slipping away from the Lakers. Kobe Bryant spinning. Oh, what a sensational move. And emerging from the supporting cast to play a leading role was Sasha Vujicic. Vujicic fires away. And suddenly the Lakers will play with a lead now. He may hold off Boston. Clinging to a slim lead late in the game, the Lakers turned again to Vujicic to try and seal the desperately needed win. Left corner for you, Tich, a three. He buries it from the corner. And the Lakers will win game three. They're back in the series. The home teams have won the first three games of the finals, and now we have a series. And a pivotal game four comes Thursday night. After their disappointing defeat in game three, the Celtics went right back to work at practice. Move your body, Ray. Move your body, Ray. Move your body. Keep coming to it. Listen up. We got to get back and talk. You got to be back and ready. Down and set. It's too loose. Too loose. Come on. Harder. Lean on the inside. Harder. More talk. More talk. All season, the Celtics' intensity had fueled their run. And now they stopped to remind themselves of what had carried them this far. Guys, way to work. Way to work. Welcome to the Staples Center. It's game four of the 2008 NBA Finals. Lakers trying to make it back-to-back -back victories and even this series up at two games apiece. The Celtics would love to get a road win and take a very strong three to one lead in this best of seven series. A packed house once again as the Lakers still undefeated here on their home floor throughout the playoffs. The Lakers with the ball in play. A touch to Gasol at the rim for the jam on a feed from Odom at the foul line. Fisher. Nice pass to Odom. Oh, the Lakers look sharp early. Powell turns, hands off Fisher. Fisher curling. Right corner, Odom. Odom sneaks in baseline and flicks it down. What's a nightmare for Boston. What a spectacular start for the Lakers as they finish with the largest lead ever after one quarter in an NBA Finals game. LA's onslaught continued, leaving Boston facing a mountain that seemed impossible to climb. Sends it outside to Vujicic who sticks a three out of the right corner. And the Lakers have their biggest lead at 24. Oh, Come on guys! Keep fighting. Keep fighting. My first thought was Mbutu. And that's what I said in the huddle. There's going to come a moment where you're going to face unreal adversity. And that's when the word Mbutu and playing together will come through for you. This is it. This is adversity that we can overcome. And we're going to win. With a pass to Pierce, right side drives past Odom to the rim and scores. Paul Pierce. At this point, we just got to take it one possession at a time. Don't anybody look up at the clock. Here's guarding in. Turn around. Shot block. Here's excellent defensive play. Guys, you know, just saying, just stay with it. Just cut it down. Just chip at it a little bit. Eddie House. Nice feed to Posey. And the layup. Pretty pass from Eddie House. And it's back to 13 again. Sam Sale said it from the bench, he said, this is what it feels like when you win a championship. This is how hard it is. And if you want it, you have to go out there and grab it. Ray Allen to the basket and bangs it in. And it's 11. This is the closest they've been. Celtics have tried to chip away. Here's to the basket. Lots of contact counted and a foul. What a move from Pierce as the lead is cut to 10. When you get in a big deficit like that and you're down by so much, you fight, you fight, you fight, you fight. Left corner house, a three is good. It's a six point game. We're down 20, seven minutes to go in the third quarter, and we're still saying, get it to 10. 
Just get it to 10. And when we look up, it's a two-point game. Down low to Brown to the rim for the jam. It's a two-point game. Never stop believing, baby. Stop. Stop. Yo, hey, yo. 12 minutes, man. 12 minutes. 12 minutes. One step close. Despite their furious comeback, the Celtics hadn't been able to take the lead, and Kobe Bryant was out to make sure they never would. Farmar the rebound, up the near side, Bryant. Kobe inside, jams it down. The MVP of the NBA trying to win a championship for the Lakers. Everybody together. All right, we're right there. We're right there. Got to believe, guys. Do you believe? Hey, right, let's keep go. fighting. Bounces it, Garnett saves the possession, back to Ray Allen. They leave him alone, so he steps inside the free throw line, kick to the corner, Posey, three, got it, and the Celtics are within one. The Boston Celtics have never led in game number four. They've got it now, trailing by one with 4.13 to go. Pierce to his left, blitz by Farmore. Kick out pass, Eddie House, jump shot, 18 feet, circles the rim, falls in good, and the Boston Celtics have their first lead of the night. This crowd absolutely stunned. When you think about being down and going through the adversity, it just shows you what a team can do if you stick together and believe in one another. Ray, sell it better for me, all right? When he dribbles this way, Ray, Kevin's diving. I need you to come up, all right? And Ray Allen would take care of the rest. Ray Allen in the corner, takes a step around Kobe, hangs in the air, reverses it up, and gets it to go! History is unfolding in front of our eyes tonight at Staples Center. A one possession away from taking a 3-1 series lead. Ray Allen straight away up top, shot clock at six. This is going to be Sugar Ray here against Vujicic. Down the right side, steps past him, gets to the rim, reverses it up and in with the left hand. And the Celtics are going to take a 3-1 lead in these finals. What an amazing turnaround here in game four. That's how you do it. No! That's how you fight. One more. One more. Hey. Let's go. One more, Steve. Good stuff. Good stuff. Hey, listen, uh, number one, that's a great win, and we should be excited about the win. But this, again, this is not our goal to win three games. Our goal is to win four games, all right? So yeah. we're yeah. hanging in there. Yeah. We're hanging in there. Yeah. Good we're hanging in there. Team. Good job, guys. Good yes, one, two, three. Good move, two. Hoping to get a win today, get that 17 championship, but you know it's going to be a lot of hard work, probably harder than the last game, so we got to be ready, baby. After the record-setting comeback in Game 4, the Boston Celtics sit someplace they haven't been in 22 years, the chance to bring the World Championship back to Boston. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Right here. Come on, man. Let's go, man. You got to say now. You know what it is tonight. Oh, we want it. It's right there. Celtics! Celtics! Paul Pierce, Southern! Kevin Garnett, and Ray Allen have waited their whole lives for this opportunity. You hear the chant. You know who it's for. Kobe down the right side, dribbling between his legs, spins on Ray Allen, hangs in the air 13 feet, switch that to a tough, tough Kobe Bryant superstar-like shot. Kobe Bryant say, look, guys, I'm not going down without a fight. Another hot start, just like they did in game four. Once again, the Lakers were off to a big lead, and this time they were determined not to give it back. This Laker team has come out ready and looking forward to going back to ball. Right now they're making plays. We gotta start making plays, all right? We gotta make plays. Tap Pierce, right hand dribble pass, Kobe gets to the rim, two hands left. Pierce can go to the basket anytime he wants. Paul Pierce trying to win the championship in the city he watched the Lakers win championships in when he was growing up. You know, I wanted to do anything I could to end the series right there at home in L.A. Garnett was in foul trouble, and it was just like a lot fell on my shoulders to where I had to carry the offensive load. They've started their comeback a little earlier than they did in game four. Pierce puts a three in. You could hear the crowd gasp. Deja vu all over again. Go to your positions. I'll bring your offense. You will find your way there. With their season on the line, the Lakers were not backing down. But one thing this series had shown is that no lead was safe.
Paul Pierce simply putting on a spectacular show with the Larry O'Brien Trophy waiting in the back. Let's go, man. Let's go get this, man. Let's go now. Let's dig down and go get this. Paul Pierce has played the entire game. And what a game it's been for him. It's good. James Posey from downtown. Pinch yourself. This is real. This is really happening. Celtics with a chance to tie or take the lead. Lakers trying to keep their season alive and force the game six in Boston. One last Celtic push brought them to within two in the final minute. But one flick of the wrist from Kobe Bryant would make the difference in game five. Ball knocked away by Bryant. Here he goes down the other end. An epic performance by Paul Pierce, but it will go to waste. Put the fuel in the plate, folks. We're going back to Boston. Game six Tuesday night. The Lakers save their season. Guys are down and, and upset because they thought they could, they thought they should, but we didn't. One at a time. Board, what's the number left? You gotta make one more. Just one more before it happens. Get game six, one more. Promise you we will get game seven. Get game six. You know, Lakers dominated us in the first quarter the last couple of games, so we just gotta get off the better start. It definitely hurts, tough one to swallow, and uh, we'll just try to get the next one at home. We're back in Boston, and Title 17 could be won on June 17th. Boston's ready for a party, there's one thing. Kobe and the Lakers stand in the way. Have some fun. Do what we do best. That's where we want to be, right guys? Right here, right here. Right, here. right on this court, on every play, play to whatever goes on. Everybody wants to win. There's not one guy in this room that wants to win more than the other guy. No. We want this right there. It's right there for us to go take it right now. Let's go, man. This crowd is loud where they have been 12-1 and one in the postseason as we get set for game six. Let's do what we do best, man. No team had ever won the finals after trailing three games to one. But the Lakers had the one player who believed he could overcome any obstacle. Why should we question him, right? Because the bigger the moment, the better he plays. Kobe, a three. Good. And the Lakers lead by two. Kobe Bryant giving him a show early. What a start for Kobe Bryant. Deep behind the line. It's good over Ray Allen. To the shoot, makes a three, takes a three, makes a three. I think somebody's ready to play tonight. I know this old saying that we've all heard for years and years, you know, offense sells tickets, defense wins championships. We got to pick up our defense a little bit, all right? Yeah. They're getting threes a little bit, we got to pick up our defense. Back Rondo comes to the backside, hacks the ball away and has the steal. Rondo racing Kobe back defensively, so Rondo shovels out to the wing, open Ray Allen three, got it! Each time the Lakers tried to gather momentum, it would be seized away by Rajon Rondo and the Celtic defense. Rondo reaches in, rips it away. Candy from a baby. Rondo, offensive end, looking around. It's a free throw line, moves to the corner, open. Sugar Ray looking for a sweet three, and he drills it. Ooh. Rondo has been a real pest defensively. Lamar, you can't make those dribble. Rondo's down there. He must have five or six steals now. Odom, a long pass, mistake to Kobe, intercepted by James Posey. Celtics the other way. Pierce comes inside the arc. Oh, in the paint. Layup, good. Nice. The fans are loving the defense. Behind the back, lost the handle, taken away by Pierce. Pierce to the front court. Bryant chases him down. Loses Kobe. Pierce comes around the left. Posey a three. Good. The Boston Celtics have shut down the Lakers' offense. It's looking easy for the Celtics now. Scarnett diving in, hangs in the air, oh. throws it! Off the window and in! Boston blowing out LA right now. But while they led by 23 at halftime, their captain wouldn't allow them to let up. It's the NBA Finals. 
and we at home. The defense picked up in the first quarter, second quarter, and we ready to win this championship. We're not going to let our foot off the gas pedal. We want it too bad, Michelle. We want it way too bad. So I expect us to come out even harder second half. True to his word, the Celtics kept adding to their lead, and the teamwork that had been their trademark would now culminate in one perfect display of championship basketball. Out to Ray Allen. Good look for three. It's good. Celtics pouring it on. No letter. No letter. All right? Keep attacking. Keep attacking. That's a three. Good! And they're on their feet at the Garden in Boston. Celtics embarrassing the Lakers. The Celtics are in another world right now. The Celtics are, have played just the, the defense, the all, I mean, it's just inspiring to watch them play. Nine minutes away, y'all! Nine minutes away from history! Every second, inching closer to Banner 17. Ray Allen for three. The Celtics are dominating the Lakers in every way there is to dominate. With their victory over the Lakers, these Celtics had written their own chapter in history. And now, all that remained was a curtain call for the new Big Three. The starters, they're gonna get one last chance to come off the floor and get that enormous ovation. Come off the game and I hug Doc. And I say, I'm happy for you, man. I love you, man. It's for everything they say you wasn't. Thank you for you know giving me the opportunity to be here. I'm grateful. The greatest single season turnaround in NBA history is complete. Banner number 17, soon to be raised to the Raptors. That was a special moment for me. And when the clock was ticking down, my first thought was, uh, we're going to win a world championship. That was it. So many emotions is just going through my mind. I'm just looking at the crowd. I'm looking up at the scoreboard. I'm thinking about 10 years I've been here. Every little moment from the time you first started playing basketball it went into your mind through all the failure it helped you get to this point right here, this one special moment. The Boston Celtics, utter destruction of the Lakers here in Game 6. And as I watched, it just seemed like it was forever. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 usually goes fast, but it was like 5, 4, Three, and I was like, man, I mean, come on, come on like, hurry up. In the final seconds, we'll take off the clock. As the clock was winding down, and it was just like, <sighs> breath of fresh air. Game, set, match, season, championship. And then finally, when it went off, I sort of got numb, like, like, like weak at the knees a little bit. The Celtics swarm the floor. It is the end of a 22-year odyssey. And it's only right that I go and kiss this floor. I've embraced the history and the culture and what it is to be a Celtic. Yeah. I've got my own. I've got my own, man. cigar and congratulations the 2008 NBA champion for the 17th time a record for your Boston Celtics it is the truth the MVP of the 2008 NBA Finals is Paul Pierce Celtic pride means nothing to me more than now championships Nothing but championships. For the guys on the team, the opportunity for them to get their first ring and, you know, be a part of that fraternity, you know, it's like icing on the cake. Where to go, champ? Where to go, champ? Go, champ! Where
Let it go, champ! I'm happy for you, man. Thank you, bro. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for us, man. <laughs> You know, 15 years of scratching and clawing. I've been trying to imagine, trying to dream what it would feel like. Biggest moment of my life, man. I can't believe this. I've been wanting to touch this champagne bottle for a long time. Being able to say you've done that. You know, you, nobody can take that away from you. You accomplished something that when you set out in the beginning of the season, this is what our goal was, and to be able to say we did that. Yo. You know what? I'm a champion. You know, we ball, and then we, just want to be all in. we really don't have a choice, Ray and I, you know what I'm saying? So, P, 21 to 5. Where you stuff here? In the 1995 draft, 12 years later, the Boston Celtics select Kevin Garnett. <laughs> we just had an interview class the other day, and we got to talk about his you knows. <laughs> Why we're speaking on it. Let's get this off the tape right here. He's saying that I'm going bald now. Your day is number. Am I going bald, y'all? You just think got so. a haircut, so your barber got nah, you. Nah, I ain't hearing that now. I probably won't lose my hair until I'm like 60. <laughs> <laughs> got two years. <laughs> Did I say that many times? <laughs> you know. Did I? Did I? You know. <laughs> you said it a couple times to him, man. You know. <laughs> I'm going to let you have it, you know. You know. You know. We lost. Get your man on this track again, but I'm quicker, yeah. This that grown man. Come on, man. I know y'all want over here with that. I'll, come on, man. Get off of me, man. It was great. You know, it was fun to be a part of it and, uh, and watch it. And I told Ray, you know, I'm going to try to get you the ball. Uh, that's twice. You just said you know twice. Am I lying? Okay. Now you have everybody well, in here conscious of what you're saying. It's great that Ray played the way he did. Well, uh, mix it up now. You know? You know? <laughs>